hello friends so just like the previous part this is also addition of carbonyl that is a nucleophile that will be used for addition to carbonyl group that nucleophile that is also carbonyl in nature that is negative charge over carbon atom so what is Wittig reaction so this is nucleophilic addition followed by elimination so it is not just nucleophile uh, philic addition though we are discussing it under this topic that is nucleophilic addition to carbonyl but after nucleophilic addition there is a further step which is elimination so that is why nucleophilic addition followed by elimination so the first uh, that is the two starting material that we have taken obviously one on one of the starting material it will be aldehyde or ketone because carbonyl group will be there and here the carbonic nucleophile that is known as Wittig reagent or it, is, it has another name which is elite and here final products directly shown in this scheme so the final product is alkyl so from the color you can understand that the CH2 which is present in elite that is now attached to this carbon and this carbon oxygen bond that will be broken and this oxygen now it is attached to phosphorus so alkene is the main product that we are getting from aldehyde and ketone and the byproduct is triphenyl phosphine oxide it is not necessary that there must be phenyl group it may be any other group also but in this case as there are the three phenyl groups so that is why it is triphenyl phosphine oxide okay so remember this is uh, if you look directly at the product it is actually not the addition product because after addition there is also elimination but if we uh, see the full mechanism then you will be able to understand that what is the addition product so this is the first step and in the second step there will be elimination so the final product is cc double bond that is alkene and starting material is co double bond so basically this is a very good process to make alkene cc double bond starting from uh, carbon oxygen double bond now what is elite that we have to know so elite is basically neutral molecule okay you can also write uh, charge over carbon and phosphorus in that case we have to write only one bond between carbon and phosphorus so this is uh, carrying one positive charge one negative charge so ultimately it is neutral it is having negative charge over carbon atom so the, as we have said that the nucleophile that we will use in this reaction that will be carbonic in nature. So negatively charged carbon atom and the adjacent heteroatom that is positively charged. Now in this particular scheme we have used phosphorus elite but that is not necessary. It may be sulfur or nitrogen also but mostly we use phosphorus elite so that is why the example uh, given here that is involving phosphorus elite but sulfur nitrogen these two atoms can also be used now the next important thing that we have to know that this reagent how we can make okay so elite we have to make so how to do that the first step is we will take pbhd so in this case we have taken triphenyl phosphine now it is not necessary that pH must be there but the example is shown with PPH. So the lone pair that is present over phosphorus that will attack this methyl bromide. So here we have taken alkyl halide. This is alkyl halide bromide actually. So this uh, PPH3 it will act as nucleophile here. So basically it is nucleophilic substitution, aliphatic nucleophilic substitution. So the mechanism that is followed here is SN2. So it will attack from backside of uh, the living group bearing carbon. So this is the living group and this will be the backside. And uh, for related SN2 mechanism, please click on the link that is appearing on the screen uh, where you will find the details of SN2 mechanism. So PPHT, it is a nucleophile, it is attacking carbon and the carbon leaving group bond is broken now br minus is acting as counter ion for this uh, positively charged phosphorus because now positive uh, sorry now phosphorus 
there is uh, it is making bond with carbon so there will be now positive charge because it has donated this long pair so this is the first step which is sn2 in the second step what we will do there are three hydrogen attached to carbon now these hydrogens are acidic in nature why it is acidic in nature because it is attached with electron withdrawing group pph3 it is carrying positive charge so it will act as electron withdrawing group so these three hydrogens will be acidic so one of the hydrogen it will be removed by the base so the base that we have used here is n butyl lithium butyl means ch3 ch2 ch2 total four carbon then lithium it is linear chain n butyl lithium so this is a very strong base because though we are saying that this hydrogen is acidic but its acidity is not uh, so high that uh, we can use any that is normal base that we use here we have to use strong base because the acidity of hydrogen is not very good okay so when this hydrogen is removed now we are getting negative charge over carbon so another form is also possible if we are not mentioning negative charge and positive charge then we have to make uh, another bond between carbon and phosphorus so both these forms are fine uh, they can exist in both of these forms okay so in this way we can make elite the first step is sn2 and in the second step we need a base which will abstract the acidic hydrogen and this hydrogen it is acidic because pp group is present which will be uh, which will act as electron withdrawing group next we will see uh, some examples of elite so as i have said that it may be sulfur and nitrogen elite also the first example that you are seeing here pph3 plus then ch2 co2 ET. now in the previous case the elide was very simple it is simply ch2 minus okay but now sorry here one hydrogen will be less because carbon is carrying negative charge so one bond with phosphorus one bond with this carbon another bond with hydrogen so here we have ester group also okay so this is another structure of phosphorus elide and in the second case we have sulfur elide so as it is sulfur there will be two ethyl group and that is total three bonds surrounding sulfur here we have total four bonds okay so sulfur it is from group 16 and uh, phosphorus that is from group 50 okay so mostly what we see for phosphorus oxidation state is plus 3 and plus 5 for sulfur it is plus 4 and plus 6 fine so here we have three bonds so that is why there is positive charge here we have four bonds there is positive charge over phosphorus and in case of nitrogen now see there is total four bonds so nitrogen is also from group 15 and it will it, it will have similar type of bonding as you have seen in case of phosphorus elite but the difference between these two types of uh, elite is that in case of nitrogen there is no presence of d orbit because phosphorus and sulfur these two are from third period but nitrogen is from second period where no d orbital is present so that is the reason if we want to have another form that is where the heteroatom suppose the heteroatom i am writing here x and the carbon so it may be x c double bond or it may be x plus c minus but this second form that is not possible for nitrogen because of absence of d orbital so here uh, okay let me write the another structure that is ph3 p now we will not write positive charge it will be ch co2 et so this is another form resonance ethyl 2 sulfur double bond ch2 but if we are writing this structure which is in double bond ch2 now this is not possible five bonds surrounding nitrogen this is not possible right so after generation the elide is ready to go no isolation is required okay directly we can use it we don't have to do any uh, separate purification so it, it can be considered as if it is uh, going on in the same state fine so it is generated in situ so whenever we will start the com that is Wittig reaction first we will make this elite and in the same container we can add the carbonyl group 
Now, in case of phosphorus and sulfur, they are more stable compared to nitrogen elite. Now, the reason we have already seen that this second resonance form possible, but for nitrogen, this second resonance form is not possible. So, the unshared electron pair on the anionic carbon that will be involved in DP back bonding. So, the negative charge over carbon that can be donated towards phosphorus or sulfur in their d orbital because they have vacant d orbit but that is not present in case of nitrogen so that is why this second resonance form is not possible and lesser is the resonance lesser will be the stability so that is why here the first two elites which is from phosphorus and sulfur they will be more stable compared to nitrogen so nitrogen elites are not stable by d orbital conjugation and you will hardly see any examples of uh, with the reaction which is involving nitrogen elite fine now we will see what is the mechanism so two different colors we have used for the elide and the carbonyl group the first step is the nucleophilic addition of carbon ion, which is basically in elide so this step is actually the nucleophilic addition to carbonyl group that is the topic under which we are discussing this but you will see there is also some uh, extra steps so the first attack that is the negative charge so this is our nucleophile it will attack here co double bond will be broken negative charge over oxygen so now we have this type of structure o negative and p positive and there is bond formation between carbon and carbon so this particular form that we will call betaine intermediate okay and it is not very stable and maybe in some cases it is not formed directly the third form is uh, formed okay so this step two now it will be attack of oxygen on phosphorus so this negative charge it will attack phosphorus so now we will get a cyclic intermediate and this cyclic intermediate is known as oxaphosphate so it may be that step two is not present directly you are getting this step three compound oxaphosphate starting from uh, the elite and carbon compound so after formation of oxaphosphate, the next step is reverse 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. So here basically opposite reaction of cycloaddition is occurring. So that is why we are saying reverse 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. It is 2 plus 2 because here we have 1, 2, 1, 2. So 2 plus 2. So finally there will be bond formation between another bond formation between oxygen and phosphorus. So the this bond will be broken, this bond will be broken, and bond another bond between carbon and carbon. So finally, this is the side product and the actual alkene that we are getting. This so here this uh, reverse cyclo addition. See if you are uh, suppose this is starting material combination, and if you are moving towards this, then it is actually uh, cyclo addition. But as we are here having the opposite one so that is why it is called reverse 2 plus 2 cyclo addition and remember sometimes this betaine these both are actually intermediate but compared to betaine oxaphosphate it has more stability because directly here we have bond but here it is carrying negative charge and positive charge so obviously betaine will be less stable now some facts about this mechanism so in many steps step 1 step 2 can occur simultaneously so there will be no formation of betaine intermediate fine now see if you look at the product that is, and compare with starting material in the starting material basically this carbonyl carbon oxygen double bond this bond as if it is now changed with uh, that is ch2 so basically I am trying to say that the double bond of alkene that is formed in the final product it is exactly at the same position where the carbonyl group is present okay so no rearrangement is occurring and the mechanism is going through cyclic intermediate so that is why there is no rearrangement and what is the driving force for this type of unusual mechanism okay because this type of mechanism it is not very common so the driving force underlying this unusual reaction is the large amount of energy that will be evolved in the bond formation between phosphorus and oxygen so PO double bond 
Look at this value. This is very high, 535 kilojoule per mole. So this bond is very stable. So that is why equilibrium will be shifted from left hand side to right hand side easily, and we will get uh, our actual desired product alkene uh, in a higher rate. So here the side, though it is side product, but as this side product is very stable because of the high energy of PO bond, so it is basically helping us to get the actual desired product, which is alkene. Evidence behind the cyclic intermediate. Now, how we can prove that actually oxaphosphatidine is formed in the medium? First of all, the entropy of activation for this reaction is found to be negative. Okay, so this is obviously in keeping with the formation of cyclic intermediate because from two different uh, separate starting material, one is carbonyl, another one is L, elite, we are getting one cyclic intermediate. So two starting material now combined together to make one intermediate. So obviously entropy is decreasing, number of species is decreasing, entropy is negative. So this is in keeping with the formation of cyclic intermediate. So this is actually a proof that cyclic intermediate is formed. The second evidence, if we do 31 phosphorus NMR experiment, that also confirms the presence of four membered oxaphosphatidine. Okay, so it will give specific uh, peak in 31 phosphorus NMR because it is containing phosphorus. So that is another proof. And the third evidence is, suppose the phosphonium salt from which we have made the elite. Though here we have taken simple uh, phosphonium salt, pH3P. But suppose if this instead of pH3, that is 3 pH group, if we have different uh, groups, obviously then the elite will be chiral in nature. Now, finally after the reaction, when phosphine oxide will be formed, that is, this one so the here we may have any different group r1 r1 r2, like that so this phosphine oxide that will be formed uh, finally as a side product in the last step it is found that it is retaining its configuration so it means what the chirality is maintained so obviously there is no rearrangement and there is no migration of any group so that is why this chirality is maintained. So we will take example here and try to see this. Here this is the elite. So look at this elite. This is a uh, obviously chiral elite because all these three groups are different and here we have CR2, uh, C negative. So this elite when it will attack carbonyl carbon then first we are getting CC bond. So this is the betaine. Then this negative charge it will attack phosphorus. Now we are getting oxaphosphate and cyclic intermediate. This is the cyclic intermediate, right? So here, see, in this portion, there is actually no change in the uh, chiral center because in this center, nothing is happening, only attack by O minus, fine? And it is also uh, not disturbing the orientation of this TR group. And finally, when this CO bond this bond will be broken, this will be broken, okay. So there will be CC bond formation. So in the final product, this is alkene, desert material, and this is the side product. So in the side product, that is phosphine oxide. This is phosphine oxide, oxide. So here, this chirality that is retained. So this is the third evidence that cyclic intermediate is formed because if this type of cyclic intermediate is not formed, then chirality uh, this uh, that is retained here, that is not possible. Okay, so this is the third proof. So these are the three uh, evidences behind this cyclic intermediate formation. Now in the next video, we will see some more aspects of this Fittig reaction because this reaction is very important. So we will see if stereo uh, selectivity that is observed and its application its importance in the coming videos okay so if you find the video helpful please please like share and subscribe i'll meet you in the next video thank you for your time